Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 207. We have the Origins Clash Pack today. This thing is a incredible. As you can see from my intro screen, they put some crazy cards in it. Let's jump right in. For nearly $30, this is better than most event decks that have ever been printed. Incredible cards in it. Very strong value to it. We have six new art cards. Seeker of the Way has to be my favorite for the new art, although I really like Valorous Stance and Honored Hierarch. Is Honored Hierarch playable? A lot of people have been hating on it. If you can connect with Honored Hierarch, he's going to be amazing. If you can't connect, not so good. This has an interesting spin in the deck when we look at the deck list to try to make him strong. But Seeker of the Way is definitely an all-star now and will be for a long time to come. Additionally, we have Siege Rhino. This guy is a house. I lost a game recently playtesting against him in Maverick. The guy's got Trample. I had a true name nemesis out and could not stay alive. Now, they eventually also put a sort of Fire and Ice on top of Siege Rhino, but he just goes over the top. In Modern, very, very strong card. Edge Legacy playability. This is going to drive down the price of Siege Rhino. About 30 days from now is when you're going to want to pick up all the Siege Rhinos you can, or at least enough to make sure that you can build a deck or two with them. Incredible card. We have two decks here. The first is Armed. This deck, I like the idea behind. Mighty Leap is one of the more interesting cards that they're playing in this deck. Honored Hierarch gets much better if you can connect, and giving him flying and plus two, plus two makes it much more likely that you can connect with him. Him. The playability of this deck is very strong. It has Collected Company, Dormox Command, and Valorous Stance. Yes, you heard me correctly, Collected Company. We already saw Siege Rhino, but Collective Company is another super powerful card in these decks. The second deck is Dangerous. This is a Bolster deck and Outlast. The theme of this deck is a little bit weaker for me. I'm giving it a B- minus on the playability. Unfortunately, I haven't got a chance to shuffle this yet. I'm going to be opening this up next week, playing some games, and doing a full playability walkthrough. But it, just in looking at the deck, Outlast is not my favorite mechanic. It looks like the arm deck may blow this deck away. There are a lot of things, though, that you can do to improve these decks. You combine them to make a more competitive deck, and then I believe that this is a tournament playable shell. If you add some extra commands, some Wardens of the First Tree, Fleece Main Lions, an Anafenza, Bremoth, you've got a very powerful creature suite, and some great removal Great instants and sorceries, very solid deck overall. This is one of the few decks that I've looked at where I saw that it was really easy to transition into a very competitive standard tournament deck. Past event decks have traditionally brought down the price of cards to make them accessible, and that's what makes me really happy about this deck. But long term, those cards rebound. We had an event deck that had two Stoneforge Mystics, a bit of a debacle the same week that Stoneforge Mystic was banned. Stoneforge Mystic went down below $10. Now it's over 30 bucks. There was an event deck that had two blood gas and a burdened catacomb in it. Great event deck. Very playable event deck. Now it's worth three times what it retailed for. Event decks and now clash packs have the opportunity to really bring some staples into the environment that people need to play popular formats. That is why I'm recommending that you buy between one and four of this event deck. Getting four Windswept Teeth, four Collected Companies, four Siege Rhinos, four Dormach Commands, and four Seeker of the Ways, these are all cards that are playable in Standard and eternally playable. This is what I really want out of a Clash Pack. Something that is playable, fun, and has long-term value. I'm giving this a 3.8 out of 4. I think the playability on one of the two decks is going to be a little bit lopsided. There's always room for improvement. But generally, Wizards of the Coast knocked this one all the way out of the park. Just really, really well done.
please see hold of that subscribe button. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon. We've got some great videos coming up, and I'm working on a death and taxes article that should be out here in the next few days for Mock Sporting House.